One of the first rules of portraiture is you ask your subject what they want the portrait to be. I mean, she's a historical figure. I'm sure she sees herself like that. She's not a model going on Vogue magazine. No. We've named the organization after Josephine Herrick because she was able to realize that photography is very powerful. It has a healing and a therapeutic process, which she then used to help the veterans. This is a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, and the reason you want to do that is it allows you to defocus the background. So if you look in this third picture, what happens is, is you get in tighter to the subject, and you defocus the background, and then the subject becomes really the main part of the oh, picture. Oh, I'm seeing that there. Yeah, the trees, right. the same trees, there, but they're kind of blurry, and these two faces are... The other thing to remember is to not have anything coming out of the person's head. So sometimes when, you, when you're standing right in front of the tree, the tree's coming out of your head, and that doesn't really look so good. I am definitely guilty of that. Well, some great tips. Matt Sweet with the president of Unique Photo in New Jersey. Well, when you're taking a picture, um, you really don't want noise in the video. Mm -hmm. So when you're taking a video movie, sometimes the autofocus on the lens can create a, uh, write a sound in the movie, and this camera actually eliminates that. This is a Samsung Galaxy camera, and this has a full Android operating system okay. on it. You can check your email, it's connected to the internet, and it's a high quality camera. Upload your picture right away. If I don't know how to do the priority mode, can I just go into like, if, if my uh, camera has some icons, I could switch it around to like the Ab sport absolutely. thing? Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of the cameras today, they have they have portrait mode, sports mode, all sorts of things like that. They adjust the cameras really, really well, all right. and they do, a, they do a pretty good job. Well, you never want the sun really behind the person because it'll fool the camera. You want the sun at some angle in front, but not directly in their eyes, and that's exactly what's happening happening in this. They're looking at the camera. Yeah, I mean, you is... really want to do that. That's a, that's a memory of your son. And this is something that everyone can do. I mean, this looks like a pretty good photo. That's right. A really a basic DSLR, you know, with the okay. lens will allow you to do that. Okay. Absolutely. We actually use photography to help people. We put cameras in people's hands. For developmentally challenged students, we put a camera in their hand and they see the world differently. In many cases, these children don't communicate very well. They don't. But through their photography, they do. The therapists really get an insight into what they what the students are about and what they're thinking. And so we use photography to actually help you. And I think that's really cool. I really do. Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Sweetwood. I'm president of Unique Photo. And I'd like to welcome you to Photo Plus Expo 2013. We have a very exciting show here at the Unique Photo booth. We have our sales staff here. We have some great specials at the show. It's been a really exciting show for us. Well, that's not necessarily it's so, considered good. It's good. There is no fat in it. There is no steroids in it. There is nothing. It's very windy. It's how do you know? That was outside. That Tell was, me how you know there's no steroids. And they don't kill them. You they don't kill them. You eat it when, when you died of natural causes. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, you eat old beef there? Yeah. Okay, over here, this looks like a nice photo, but it's kind right. of not that exciting. Right, right. okay, so let's say, let's say you go to church on Sunday and you, you get out there and you say, okay, we're going to take a family picture. Everybody does that, but what happens with that picture is that it's not really natural, it's not a memory, and it's hard to figure out what to do. Too much grass, and here's something that happens you wouldn't realize, even looking in the viewfinder of the camera, is the railing or part of the house is coming out of her head. <laughs> right. The cameras continue to get better. There's physics limitations. I'm not going to say never, because you never say never, but there's physics limitations. You have optics on the lenses, you have sensor sizes in the cell phone, the sensors have to be smaller, there's power restrictions. So even though the smartphones are getting better, the cameras are also getting better, and they're getting connected. So there's really very little reason not to have both. All right, so here's how, right. how our graduation photo should have looked like, Clayton. From this to this, what did you do? Well, you want to make a memory, and that was sort of the joke that I was making about your photo, is that you look at that and everybody sort of looks pained and they're sitting there in a sort of a fake background and it's right. not really right. That captures the moment. People take the shot straight on, it's very boring. Who knows whether he's even really playing soccer or not, he's just holding the ball. All you have to do is move your body. Take a different position on the shot, move the ball, and you end up with an exciting shot. With smartphones getting better and better, do most people still need a traditional camera? Absolutely. There are certain picture-taking circumstances in your life when a smartphone is just not really going to take an adequate picture. It just doesn't have the lens on it. It doesn't have the sensor that's needed. And so you don't really want to miss those moments. And so you definitely want to have a phone with you. Everybody tries to have one device, but one device isn't good for everything.